morning. I showed you the breakfast this morning because <clears throat> this is vlog 20. And I think day 20 of vlogging. And I think I started eating breakfast every morning, like maybe a week, maybe two weeks before starting vlogging. So it's been probably, let's say five weeks of eating breakfast first thing in the morning, which I never used to do. I used to be a coffee in the morning and then eat like, if I got up at, like, say, 8.30, I'd drink coffee, and then whatever, and maybe work out, and then I would eat at, like, 11, 11.30. But my wife read this thing. <laughs> it's how all great <laughs> decisions start. We read this thing online, but it was just talking about the benefits of eating within the first, like, 30-ish minutes of waking up and why, like, breakfast is important, and blah, blah, blah. And one thing that resonated with me was that it's, like, if... Basically, you're very healthy and you have a very good insulin regulation. You won't feel hungry in the morning. That was always my thing. I just never felt hungry in the morning. In fact, I would feel like I was forcing food down my throat if I ate. So I never ate. And apparently part of, I'm sure, but part of what that means is that my insulin regulation is great, which is awesome. But what happens is that when you eat for the first time later in the day, you have a really big spike, but then a really big drop <coughs> of that insulin. And so then you tend to get laggy and tired and groggy. It's literally in the article, it said around two o'clock. And I swear in my life, the only times of the day I've ever felt tired or I ever feel tired, because I'm a pretty high energy guy, is around two o'clock. I don't know. It's always been a time where like, if I'm going to take a nap, if I'm going to whatever, like that's the time. So I was like, huh. All right, and then also, like, I mean, my background with CrossFit and just, like, sports in general, like, <clears throat> athletes eat in the morning, athletes eat before training. It's important to get food in, and I do really live the life of, like, a pretty decent athlete. Like, I train in the gym four or five days a week. I'm on the course four or five days a week on top of that. So, you know, I, need, I, I do need to, like, fuel my body properly and whatever, and so eating first thing in the morning was something that I wanted to incorporate and the reason why I filmed it today was I like woke up I mean I've been feeling this a little bit on and off but I woke up and I was just like man like I I can't imagine not eating right now which is crazy like I wake up some mornings hungry but it's like regardless it's just like such a part of my morning now and I actually like it I like turning the light on and starting to cook it kind of wakes me up it kind of I feel like I would just stay in this, like, half-asleep limbo for, like, an hour after waking up before. Whereas now I'm just kind of like, all right, like, I sit here, I, you know, I'll either read or watch some YouTube videos or whatever, eat my breakfast, drink my coffee, and then we'll pull up the phone and start going through the emails and all that kind of stuff. And so, anyway, I'm just saying, I like it. <coughs> Sorry. If you haven't tried it, try it. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it can be helpful. I've started doing Greek yogurt. I used to, it's so funny, I used to think I was, uh, I had issues with dairy, but it, the more, I, I've had Greek yogurt every single morning for the last three and a half weeks, so clearly no issues with dairy, but one of the things that I think is interesting is that, like, I could always eat it, it was just, I couldn't eat, like, too much of it, but I think it was one certain kind, I think the stuff that's, like, ha like, like, yogurt, with all the enzymes and stuff. Um, and then cheese is another one that's really easy for me. I can eat no problem. But I think also it's like, it, I always used to think that it was like the things I was eating were causing me problems. But I think now it's like the things I'm, I wasn't eating were causing me more problems. And I think the probiotics and the yogurt have helped because I may also, I used to kind of have issues with gluten a little bit. And I feel like I can kind of eat it like whenever I want, how much, how much I want now. And it's just like, nothing's really different which is kind of crazy so anyway i'm doing the greek yogurt now because i actually think it's been helping and it's funny you think about like the old commercials for like activia yogurt remember that it was always like ooh, good for your gut and like apparently it actually is so we've been doing 175 grams greek yogurt which is like about 20 grams of protein and then we'll do a couple slices of that chicken bacon around us around 35 grams of protein with breakfast, um, I actually just ordered a protein powder. I'm going to start mixing it into the yogurt for the days. I don't feel like the bacon. But anyway, yeah, that's that's our new morning routine. I'm loving it. I'm going to go do what you do in the morning, and then I'm going to have a coffee. I also have a really fun meeting. Well, potentially really fun meeting coming up that maybe I can tell you guys about after it. I don't know. 
I'll, I could probably definitely tell you after it. I just want to know what's happening before I tell you, which the meeting shits off. But it's like a content meeting slash. Yeah, we'll leave there. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Rain. We're not playing golf outside today. Oh, thank goodness. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, so I had the call. It went well. I'm still not going to tell you what it's about because it's one of those things where I just don't want to, like, say it unless it's going to happen, you know? So it was promising, um, but there are some logistical BTS things that need to be figured out and come into play before that would become a reality. So I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to see, you know, if those things do, in fact, become realities or not. And I'll let you know kind of when the time's right. So I, I'm sorry for being cagey, but with the nature of me not really, you know, doing much with these logs in terms of like cutting out things I've already said, I'm probably not going to cut out anything I said. And I'll just let you know that I'm working on something behind the scenes that could be really, really cool. Anyways, let me uh, let me chat about uh, a couple different things right now. Number one, let's talk about the Golf Digest article that was posted. So play golf Myrtle Beach. Uh, is hosting a 16-person qualifier with a bunch of YouTube golfers, which is super cool. And they're basically giving a sponsor's exemption spot into their Myrtle Beach Classic PGA Tour event in, I want to say May, to the winner of the 16-person field. Now, not everyone in this field is a YouTube golfer. Some of them are um, like Corn Fairy guys and whatever, but it's cool. It's very unique. Obviously, there's, you know, there's Luke Kwan, there's George Bryan, there's Michael Morris, there's Ryan Horvath, there's Buster Jack, there's all these guys. And it's really cool for YouTube golf, but golf, I just wrote an article. I think Mac Boucher did a really good job of um, kind of replying to the other day, but just basically they said like, you know, all you have to do to make it to the top level of golf now is have a camera and be able to say like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I don't know, it just it rubbed a lot of YouTubers the wrong way. I guess Peter Finch talked about it in his podcast. Mac Boucher talked about it in um, his Instagram story and just showed the duplicity, is that the word? I don't know, the double standard, that's definitely the right word, where they're writing that article, but simultaneously the exact same day they published that article, they messaged him in the morning asking to use and share one of his Instagram videos on their social page. So it's like, they don't want to accept that YouTube golfers and content creators are the future, but yet they want to like trash them, which I just think is like, it's pretty funny. So Anyways, that is what it is. You can't really, you know, they're old heads and they're going to say what they're going to say and they're going to have their stuck in the past views. But like the reality is like YouTube golf is pulling more views than two of the tours they cover, like TV World Tour and Live Golf, Live Golf, which they cover heavily, or at least the the drama of it. I mean, we got five times the concurrent viewership on the Good Desert Open than a Live Golf event gets. So it's like, it is substantially larger and... You know, if you want to keep pretending it doesn't exist, that's fine. But you're going to be like everyone who pretended the internet didn't exist. You know, like it's just it's going to be a thing. And the longer they kind of push against it, the further away from it they're going to be when they finally do come around to it. So, it is what it is. I just found that interesting. Um, but yeah. So anyway, we're headed to the simulator right now. Actually, we're headed to it. It's called Haus of Golf. H A U S House of Golf. Haus of Golf. I don't know if they're German owners or what, but essentially it's an indoor bay facility it's got like five or six bays and i think they all have track mans, which is very cool very unique not a lot of like a lot in vancouver has a lot of like how do i say this nicely um consumer golf indoor simulator places so like you know you go with your buddies and you get a bunch of drinks and you eat nachos and you know you're kind of whatever with the golf and you're shooting 120 and the simulator is just like some thing from Asia that like sort of works but doesn't like they're not boasting GC quads and track mats and stuff like that so it's rare to find an indoor golf facility in Vancouver that has like quality radar equipment so I'm going out here for two reasons number one it's rainy today and okay we'll go out work on the swing but I have a lot of content to film which I'm very excited about we're filming a video for the golf channel which is going to be an explanation of how I've increased my um, club head, or not my club head speed, my ball speed so dramatically over the last four weeks. I'm going to be kind of breaking down everything I've done, which you guys in the vlog kind of know, but everything I've done and 
actually get the numbers because I don't even know what the numbers going to be. Like I've I've documented me going 10 miles per hour faster by just adding a hip turn, but I still had no backswing, I still had no leg, I still had no wrist hinge. So now that we have all those things, as of like last night, I'm very excited to see what that number is going to be. Um, and then I'm basically just going to like yeah show that, and talk about it, and I'll probably do actually like a full 2024. Um, like distances too because my distances are definitely going to be different with all my clubs again now that I have this wrist hinge and this more you know developed swing so I'm definitely very interested to see what that all ends up being as well so anyways we're going to film that we're just rocking it solo today I'm not bringing anyone because I think I'm going to kind of build it with like slight commentary like I've seen these videos in the past and typically a creator will have like a videographer there and they're talking directly to the camera um I'll have the camera there. I could come up and talk directly to it, but I think I might do kind of like a sit-down commentary um, mix with it. But the cool thing with TrackMan is I should be able to record all the data on my phone as well, so you guys can see in real time um, all the swing data and everything. So it should be very, hopefully, a very cool video, and hopefully one that can help some people. So I'm excited to record that. But yeah, that's the plan for today. No gym today, just that. I'm kind of gymming every other day right now, and then. Um, I'm pretty much practicing probably five practicing slash playing like five days a week right now if I can I mean obviously when the weather gets like this I'm limited but thankfully today we're gonna go play somewhere inside um I think I'll probably take tomorrow off golf and then gym and then I think we're playing and filming on Thursday I think so should 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 be fun should be fun should be fun Well, that was cool. Oh, uh oh, I gotta put my hat back on. I forgot I didn't have my hat on. There we go. That was cool. That was a very, uh, a very cool little, it, not little, huge indoor golf facility. I think it had like six plus track fan bays, which is just insane. Um, unfortunately, it's like super far from where I live. And I honestly, honestly dislike simulator golf, despite the fact that I just actually shot two under on the front nine with their I mean it's track band so it's like pretty accurate and they they do all the putting for you I hit everything inside 10 feet um made two birdies and then all pars and like quite a few were like par safe chips around the green so short game was just on fire right now which is great but anyways despite the fact that I did that I actually hate sim golf I hate it like I really do not enjoy it at all like I just golf for me is like equal parts being outside but then like I need to see what I'm doing you know I like to see especially for a short game and really even approach shots or whatever like I just want to see where I need to put the ball show me where I need to put the ball let me see it let me see the depth let me see how far away it is let me see all that and then like I'm just gonna hit the shot you know like that's that I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna get this ball to that place or try to and that's how I operate. Like, I don't have, like, I don't know what a 100 shot feels like. I just know what it looks like. like let me see it, and then I'm going to react to it. And, like, I just trust my body, and then my body typically does what I want. So, anyways, I'm not a fan of sick golf. But that place is beautiful. So, congrats to that hoss of golf. Very, very cool establishment. But we were there for a purpose. Obviously, we were there to 
try to record a um, ball speed video, which I think we succeeded with. Um, the lighting in there is a little dark. I kind of thought about bringing my own lighting, but I really just, I don't know. There wasn't really anywhere to plug it in. And the lights I have at home aren't, I, I don't think would really help that much in that situation. I would probably need like big box lights if I didn't have. So I didn't do that. But anyways, it was good. I hit a 155, which is the fastest ball speed I've ever had. And then I was cruising at 150, which is cool. That's the cool part. It's like, where I'm cruising comfortably now is like 10 plus miles an hour faster than where I was cruising before with zero speed training. Like that's the big thing is I haven't even, um, I haven't even done any speed training. Like I'm tempted for sure, maybe sometime this year or next winter to get like the stack speed system. Um, I think Fitzpatrick talked about after he won the open a couple of years ago and do some reps on that because I've never been a fast twitch athlete like ever. Um, I've always been more slow twitch, like longer, like m medium speed, um, but I can go for a while. Like, for example, like I was never a hundred meter dash or I could, I was hundred meter time was brutal, but I could run a mile faster than just about anyone. Like my mile time is incredible. So like that is sort of like, I'm, I'm not, you know, slow twitch marathon, but I'm like, you know, slower, um, but I can sustain a pretty high output. So. Anyways, I think the way that translates over to golf is I just, like, I don't have the fast twitch fibers naturally to, like, swing really fast, but I think you can train them, and I think if I use some sort of, like, speed training system, I could probably increase that ball speed again, but I don't know. I'm, like, I don't, I don't want to hit the ball far for ego. It's, like, purely practical. Like, I'd like to be able to hit the ball further, I guess, since, like, it is an advantage, and, like, I see that when I play with Tyson, like, the positions he can put himself in by hitting the ball just like so much further is obviously advantageous but I don't know man I hit the ball pretty far like I was carrying it like I had a couple 250 carries the other day at Kings Links and that's at sea level in the dead of winter um you know I can definitely in the summer hit the ball over 300 yards with roll like it's not it's not like I'm hitting the ball 225 off the tee every time like it it's enough and like I don't know, it's very playable, like, I don't, I really like where my games are right now, and even playing on the track, man, there, like, you know, the way I was, I, I think I hit every fairway except one, um, on that front nine, and, like, I don't know, I just, my game is consistent, I feel like my swing is pretty consistent, and even with adding the wrist hinge and all that, like, it, that just makes it feel a bit more athletic and a bit more, like, flowy, which is good, but I still think it's, like, just as repeatable, which I think is super important, and, you know, you mix that with, like, I have a very strong short game, and, like, I can always rely on that, and so, I don't know, I just don't feel like I'm, like, dying for distance, you know, so, I don't know, I, I, at some point, I'm sure we'll do it, um, just for the fun of it, but I think it was cool to be able to, like, show and show you guys exactly how I'll talk you through it in that video, that I basically gained 15 miles an hour on my driver without any speed training, just through, like, a couple little things, and then, you know, to now be cruising, I mean, like, you gotta remember, too, like, it wasn't just, like, 140 was the fastest I was swinging before now. Like, that wasn't my cruise. My cruise was, so, like, 130, 135. So, now to be cruising at 150, like, that is, that's actually crazy. So, anyways, it, it's definitely, it's, uh, you know, that's enough of an improvement for now. I know it's jokes compared to a lot of other people's ball speeds, but, listen, it works for me. Like, if I can put the ball somewhere between like 260 to 300 in the fairway almost every time i'm not complaining like i'm not out here playing 7500 uh yard golf courses i'm not trying to be a professional golfer like i want to be as good as i can and i want to play on the youtube tour <laughs> but i don't you know to do that i definitely don't think i need to be hitting the ball crazy crazy far um and if i do there's time to get there i'm also still only my third coming into my third year of golf so i'm not stressed about it anyway I'm probably gonna go home. We're gonna chill for a bit. We got a little like we had some mouse guy coming. We had a mouse problem at the house recently, um, so we got some mouse mouse hunter <laughs> mouse hunter. I don't know. He's coming to to look at that situation. Uh, so I'm gonna be there for that, and then I'll probably get stuck in and, and edit this video, not this video, but the the one I just shot, the ball speed video, a little bit. But I also I do have to record a bunch for that. Um, I don't really know if I have the energy to record a bunch of that right now, so we'll probably go west up and then see how 
the rest of the day takes us. But these gray days, man. We've had, like, a couple sunny days. These gray days. Uh, that make you so sleepy. So sleepy. I feel like I can fall asleep. I'm going to go home and have a coffee, though. Maybe that'll wake me back up. But anyway, I hope you guys are having just a lovely day. Just a lovely day, you know? Just a lovelier day than gray old Vancouver. That was fun. That was the first outdoor run I've done. I did an interval run maybe like a month ago. But that's the first like consistent pace outdoor run I've done in a long, long time. And that was good. I kind of just wanted to do like a manageable distance that I could feel in control of because we're still nursing the groin ab injury. So I didn't want to like do anything that was going to cheese it off too much. And where I run and where I live is there's quite a bit of elevation change. So just got to be careful with the uphills, but I was good. I did 4K, 16, 22, 16 minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, yeah, felt good. In control, had a nice little, I let myself sprint the last like 100 meters just because it's fun get a little metallic taste in the mouth but that was good one. I think I'm gonna now it's starting to warm up a little bit start to incorporate a little more running because so I've always been a runner like you get short distance all my sports have been running base on a field and whatever so it's always come pretty natural to me and I definitely enjoy it I definitely get the endorphins for me it's during after i don't understand how people say they feel good if you feel good after running you didn't run hard enough so i feel kind of like crap right now but I felt really good during i feel really good right until i stop and then i feel like crap but a good crap like i know i did something but <clears throat> i definitely feel a little whoop. i got the metallic taste but no, that was a good run very happy to get that in <sighs>